Thanks for watching one of our messages today. My name is Caleb Combs and I'm the gathering pastor here at the river and we would love to connect with you. An easy way to do that is text River Connect to 97000 or you can visit our website, theriverchurch.cc for more information. If you'd like to financially contribute and give to the River Church, you can text an amount to 84321 or again, visit our website and click the giving tab. We hope you enjoy the message today. All right. Hey, I uh, want to take the next couple minutes. We won't keep you in the rain uh, all day. Um, I wanted to share a message, message with you this morning. Um, it is really great to be out at the fair. Really, it's, I, I tell people it's my second favorite Sunday of the year. Uh, other than Easter, I love being out at the Oakland County Fair with you, uh, getting to praise Jesus out here as we get to open God's word. Uh, but it is, it is great to be able to do that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, and we'll jump in uh, to the message uh, this morning. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we come to you. We praise you, we love you, we honor you. Thank you for this morning. God, we praise you in all things. God, for those that are here, those watching online, we are so grateful that you are building your church. God, we praise you, we love you, we honor you. Speak through your message, speak through your word this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. A couple of weeks ago, I, uh, I got, a, got into a conversation with one of my, uh, my buddies, and he he told me his daughter got engaged, and so I, I, I said, congratulations, that's awesome, excited for you as a family, it would, um, just, just really excited. So the following Sunday, I was sitting in the backstage in, in Holly getting ready to come out and preach, and his daughter was in the band, and she was part of the, the worship team, and so she was in the back, and so I, I looked at her and said, congratulations. And she looked at me with a befuddled look. And she said, for what? And I said, the engagement. And I'll never forget the look on her face. This is a true story. It happened two Sundays ago. She said, he asked my dad. And I went, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, no, 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 really tell me. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And at that moment, I ruined an engagement. She did get engaged that night, and so I said congratulations. And if she'd have been here, I'd have given her flowers. But I had a foot-in-the-mouth moment. You, you, you can connect with that, right? But I didn't get the response I was looking for. Obviously, you hear someone's engaged, you, you want to... Uh, respond and, and be excited for them. I didn't get the response I was looking for. This morning for the next couple minutes, I'm not going to keep you super long, I want to talk about a response. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 deals with two responses. He has written a letter to the church of Corinth and, and basically corrected them. He's given them truth and said, you know what, I, I, I want you to be clear on who and what God is and who I am. And then he really is, and, and he says that he agonizes over their response. He was worried about their response. He, he lost some sleep over their response because he didn't know how they would respond. I, I don't know about you, but when I'm corrected, I don't necessarily respond the best in all ways, sometimes I respond with a nice smile and say, I don't care what you think. No, I don't say that I think it, right? Or in other times, I'm like, wow, thank you. I appreciate that. I needed that correction. Well, Paul is writing to this church and corrects them and gives them some wisdom. And then he is waiting for their response. If you have your Bible this morning or a device or I'll just read it out loud, we would have had a screen out for it to be out, but obviously it's raining. But I want to read you a, a passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 8, says, Paul says, For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I see that letter grieved you. Though only for a while, that is, as it is, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved 
into repenting. For you felt a godly grief so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. Whereas worldly grief produces death. Paul gives two options. He didn't know how they would respond. They would respond first. He was worried that they would respond in a worldly grief. That worldly grief is one when someone comes up to you and corrects because our culture is all about truth speaking. We like to truth speak in someone's life, but we aren't very good at truth hearing one another. And Paul writes this letter of correction, writes this letter of repentance to this church, and he's worried about their response. And he's worried, will they respond in a worldly way? Paul says this worldly grief leads to death. You're like, does it, like, I will instantly die? Is this what this means? No, he's drawing a picture that when someone corrects you or somebody comes and talks about a, a failure in your life, you have an option to respond in a godly way or in a worldly way. That worldly way will lead to death, not instant death, but it leads to what the Bible describes as sin. It leads to enslavement. It leads to lack of freedom in those moments. You see, that death is something that grips us. Ephesians talks about this bitterness that grows that leads to malice. And you're like, what does that have to do? Well, when someone comes up and gives you a word of correction or a word of, of truth, you can receive it in a godly way or you can respond in a worldly way and say, no, 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 I'm going to rebuff it. I'm going to push it away. And then automatically, right, come on, we're all honest with ourselves. When someone comes up to us and, and gives us a truth that we don't like to hear, we may know it, may not know it, a seed of bitterness can be planted in our lives and it grows into malice, then leads to death. And so we are no longer free from what that charge or that truth is. It ends up growing in our lives, which then leads to death. But then Paul is surprised, you read a little bit into that, that they responded with godly grief. Like, what does, that, what does that mean to respond with, with godly grief? Well, verse 9 says, Because you were grieved and repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through it. For godly grief produces repentance. The word repentance means to turn away. I was headed in a direction. I was confirmed on a, a decision or something, identity, and then I turned from it. 180 degrees. I was preaching a camp one time, and I was all, hey, you know what, we're time, we're going to repent today, we're going to turn 360 degrees, we're going to head the other direction. Math was never my strength. But repentance is 180 degree. I was headed in a direction, and I turned away. I was heading on a choice. I was heading in a response, and I realized that I needed to repent and turn. But then it doesn't just stop there, which I'm grateful Paul does. He says that repentance leads to salvation. I don't know about you, church, but I love that word salvation. That word salvation is a word that brings freedom. It's a word that brings a, 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 a power, a authority, but it also brings a realization that, wow, I am free. I'm free from what that truth was spoken into my life. I am now free, and I received it. I've repented from it, and now I can turn and walk the other way 180 degrees free. But it doesn't just even stop there. He said it leads to salvation without regret, without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Godly grief produces salvation without regret. You say, why are we gathered here in 
the rain at the 4-H fair in Oakland County. Like, why, why do we do this? Because I've been saved. I've been forgiven. You see, someone one time looked at me and said, Caleb, you are a sinner, and your sin will lead to death. But yet there is a free gift that you can receive. It's Jesus Christ. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And that's how you receive Jesus. And that's how you can respond to someone's truth. Or you can respond as a hardened heart. Someone comes up to you and say, yeah, you're a sinner. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I don't like you anymore. Well, you, you, you don't have hope for eternity because you don't know Jesus. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. You see, what we do is we have an option to respond. Do I respond to that truth with godly grief and realize, yes, I am broken in my life and I can receive freedom in salvation? Or do I harden my heart? I ask you that this morning. How do you receive truth? Honestly, for many of us, we don't like when someone gives us that truth. We're like, you know what? It's a rebuff. It's a hardening of heart. We respond with a worldly grief, almost like we're upset we got caught. You know, I like when you catch your kids doing something, and you're, they, they, they're like, I'm so sorry. I will never do it again. Come on, parents, you look at them, roll your eyes and say, sure, yeah, right. Paul is writing this letter to the church of Corinth in a corrective manner, in love, speaking the truth in love, but saying, hey, you need Jesus in your lives. He'll change you. He'll make you new. He'll remove all things. and Change your life. In a real, true way. So this morning, I ask you that question. How do you receive truth? You may be sitting here and you don't know Jesus or standing here or wherever you find yourself. You're watching online. And the truth that someone looks at you and says, you know what? If you don't know Jesus, you're headed to hell. You're like, wow, that's that's harsh. No, no, that's truth. I love you enough to tell you that. See, death... It's caused by sin. And that's every single one of us, right? Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. See, my payment for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ thy Lord. I can receive it, repent from my sins, and turn towards salvation and head in a free new man. And so can you. You can do that today. What I love is John the Baptist preaching a message of saying, repent and be baptized. And Acts, Peter, preaching at Pentecost, preaches a, 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 a sermon, a message of repentance. Turn from your sin. Turn from it 180 degrees and head, and you can receive salvation. How will you respond today? I love you enough to look you in the eye and tell you the truth. If you don't know Jesus, you have no hope. It's not how good you are. It's not how many times you come to church out in the rain. It's not how much money you give. It's not how many times you do good to someone else. Well, I donated a lot. Now that's great. We're happy for it. But until you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, That's how you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and receive salvation. What I love is Paul says you won't regret that salvation, that freedom, that feeling, that love that God has given you. How will you respond to that truth this morning? See, the response is humility. That response is saying, God, I... Respond with the grief of my life. I realize I am broken. See, what I love is there's no pretentious here. There's nobody saying, hey, I've got it all together. 
There's no perfect people allowed. I, I love getting up and saying we're just a bunch of broken people that have an incredibly perfect and real God in our lives, and I'm okay with that. It's not until the church realizes, hey, we don't have it all together. Yes, we're broken. Yes, we're struggling. Yes, but I'm a sinner saved by the Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb that's covered my faults, and I repent from it and move towards salvation. That's what when the church stands up, that's what when we start to live that out in our lives. How will you respond this morning? The band's going to come up and they're going to play one more song. We'll get you out of this rain. They're going to give you a free ride ticket. I don't know, even know if they're going to be open later today. You can save it and have fun with it or whatever. But I want you to do this. You say, you know what, Caleb, I, I want to respond to that message. You look at me and say, I want to have hope. I want to have the freedom of the gospel. I want to become a new creation. We'd love to help you with that. We're going to have some volunteers. We're going to have some of our staff down at these tents. You say, you're going to walk up and you can tap on the shoulder. You say, hey, I'd like to see that. I'd like to hear that. I'd like to pray with somebody. I'd like to respond. We also have a couple baptismals. You're like, hey, you know what? It's okay. We've got clothes. We've got to change the clothes for you. They're dry, and, and so you can keep them. And so we've got some areas where you can change, where you can be baptized. If we can help you with that, we'd love to. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, and the band's going to come sing a last song. But I will ask you how you will respond. Will you respond with godly grief that I could turn to salvation and freedom or where you'll be enslaved by your bitterness, your hurts, the realization that, you know what, my heart is hardened by this gospel message. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we come to you. We love you. We praise you. We praise you. We love you. We honor you. God, we need you in our lives. God, thank you for... I don't know if we're losing. There we go. We just need you, God. Thank you for this morning. God, thank you for the message of the gospel. God, if there's somebody sitting here watching online that does not know you, may they respond in a real way, believing that, you know what, in our brokenness we can find salvation and freedom will respond in a way that is godly. God, we praise you. We lift you up. Your name is to be worshipped today. God, we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. If we can pray with you, encourage you, you want to respond in a way, I'd ask you to come on down. You want to get baptized, we can set that up. Uh, you never been baptized. You want to get baptized today. Let's, let's do that. Be great. It's a memorable moment. You can head right over here to these tents. We'd love to help you with that today. You guys ready? Maybe, if the technology works or not. Let's do it.